Welcome back, everyone. I am doing a video on the new um, New Year's Guarantee SSR banners. So, just wanted to start off saying, uh, although it might seem really, really good at first, these are only for uh, paid soul stones. So, if you're free to play uh, account like me. Uh, I cannot, like, it, it's not an option. It's like, yes, please give us money. So, uh, just, uh, I guess, like, a little bit of a disclaimer there. And if you are free to play, don't feel really super pressured into uh, paying money so that you can summon for these banners because these are, again, kind of still random since you don't get a pick which characters that you get it is also just it's still random like you can still get the character that you didn't want and i think that like with lucky fountain and everything going on right now you really don't need to feel pressured too much into spending money for these new banners or these limited event banners which guarantee the SSR that everyone wants but in terms of like if you have already spent money on this game and like you already have uh, purchased soul stones or if you have I guess the VIP stuff or if you uh, already have paid soul stones then I would definitely definitely recommend summoning on these banners because again it's 1000 soul stones which is the same thing as just a normal ordinary banner for a ten pole but you're guaranteed a ssr so if you already have the soul stones that paid for definitely definitely use it i would definitely recommend like this would be the best time to use soul stones if you have already paid for it and also i guess if you're considering Maybe you might want to put in some money, uh, then, like, like this would be the time to do it because, um, I guess with past events in terms of guarantee SSR characters, I think, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but I want to say this is the first time they actually, uh, did they do it last year? I think, I think this might be the first time, that or they might have done it last year. But they actually divide it up to, into different sections of A, B, C, D of the different characters. Because I know at least two years ago, it might have been last year, at, at least two years ago, they had all the SSR characters in one giant banner. So it's like if you want a certain character, like one character, it's like one out of like... 20 30 it's it was like a ridiculous amount so if you're going for a particular character your chances are a lot better now that they're divided up more so for this video i'm going to try to i guess look at each section of the banners and kind of rank them and the way that i'm going to do it is i'm going to give 1.4 characters that are i'd say like like chase characters that are like one of the better characters or most um, up to date I guess in Evertail and the most impactful characters that you can get and I'm gonna give like let's say half a point to characters that are still like like still no noteworthy not saying that like uh, if you don't if they don't get a point they're not noteworthy it's just uh, I'd, I'd say it's just to also take into consideration and I think there's only very few that I'm actually gonna do minus half a point just because I feel like if you're a brand new player and you get that character then you'd actually kind of be you'd, you'd kind of be disappointed like either they're a bit harder to use or more challenging to use uh, just they would only work on certain teams 
So with that, like, is this, is my ranking bias? Oh, totally. <laughs> it is totally biased. Like, there it is very, very, uh, very subjective. And it is based off of just uh, the characters I have, the characters I played against. And so it's, use, use this to your discretion. Okay, so starting off with Banner A. So the first big two characters that I see are Snow White and Bride of Meadow. Because these two characters are just... They're, they're very, very powerful and very good and just... I think they are uh, definitely worthy of points just because the auto guard and just the ability to ignore defenses and just attack someone for 500 on the very first turn with would just yeah I'd just give two points to that banner just because of uh, Bride Love Mila and Snow White and then I'd give like half a point to Ray because of her summoning like, in terms of the AI, I think, I don't know why, the AI just loves to ignore her and always go after her summons. And then after that, she'll just summon more summons. I don't have her yet, but the AI just loves to just target her summons. And then I'd also give another half point to Rolotia, just because I think stun's always nice. Like, stun entry, stunning two characters just by existing and then being able to add more stun to them is it's, it's always nice and useful but it's very helpful but it's not going to be necessarily your carry like the big your big character that's going to carry you through a fight and then the other character that would give like half a point to would be Colin Callan Colin just because of her uh, sleepy sabotage and used right it can be really really good but it, like I guess that's kind of why I put it as half point just because the AI doesn't always use it very well like ideally you'd want to kind of stall it out but the AI loves to just target the sleepy sabotage that it creates and it's it, I, I'd give it half a point. So overall, I'd give Banner a like 3.5 points. And then this is out of um, oh no, not that. It's out of the number of characters. The way that I'm doing it, since not all the banners have the same amount of featured characters, and I'm kind of just going based more off of probability, since it is a random character that you can get from this. So this would be a 3.5 out of 7 to me. And then for Banner B, I think the big two is the Stun and Terra's, just because she's really good. Her Thunder Heart, her Stun Skin, her Holy Ground, all of it, she can, she can survive a lot of things like if you have enough spirit it's really hard to kill her like that during her survival storm skin phase and the other point I would give would be to Hibiki because I I don't know I might be a little bit biased because I like I really like her for my crisis team crisis strain is amazing and just, yeah, I'm a, yeah, yeah I'm, I'm a bit biased for that, but I'm, I'm giving her a point for that. In terms of half a point, I would give it to Endless Astrid, mainly because of her passives. Like, her passives are, they're really good. Like, she's, it's, it helps poison team so much just having auto poison and it enables a lot but 
Yeah, uh, yeah, I'd still give it half a point. It, c it could go a full point. I'll, I'll give it half a point. And then so, since there are so many characters on this banner, I'd give, I'd rate or rank this banner about two and a half out of seven. And for banner C, I'd say the big two standouts are There you go. Yeah. Elmina. Elmina? Yeah. Yeah. She is very, very strong. Like, she just combines stun and stealth, which are just. It's insane. Like, she can carry a lot of a team. Just being able to heal herself and generate more spirit ignore everything and a lot of the AI doesn't want to touch her because of her stun skin so she has she has pretty good just free reign over a lot of a lot of enemies so I'd give her a point and then I'd also give Seiya a point because she can generate so much spirit so fast and just spread it everywhere with healing and just only one cost for overdrain. It's it's not the strongest of like hitting thing, but when you level her up and uh, she can she can do a lot of work. That and her burning hearts, it has saved me so much and she's very she can survive a lot. And then in terms of half points, I would have to give to Aleria because of mainly because of her nightmare drain. Like nightmare drain is amazing for sleep. And being able to heal and still not wake up a unit while they're sleeping. I think that was pretty much it was very game-changing for sleep teams. And the other half point I'm gonna give to is Jonah Arc. The reason why it's not a full point is like she she is very good. It's just the AI. The AI and Guardian Angel. Like sometimes it's like, hey, this is my main DPS. Please don't send them to the back. And they just got sent to the back. So that's why it's it's, 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 she's very good, but half point because of the AI, and it can be just so random with Guardian Angel. And then, so, uh, I'm actually gonna give minus half points for two characters on this banner, which would be Oime? More because just spirit reset? I don't know, it's... I don't know, I feel like it can kind of mess your own team up and you mess yourself up. And it's not... It's kind of... The, the whole set itself is a bit underwhelming for an SSR. And I'd say Swimsuit Ludmilla. Just because I, I do have her. She is really good, but... if since Since this is just completely random, it's all RNG. The chances of you already having a stealth team, a specifically water stealth team as well, it's 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 probably not very good uh, chances you're gonna already have a team to build her around. So she she is she can be really good with a water stealth team. But with AI, that also is another factor where it sometimes she'll just keep relying on Endless Summer to not die. And she's poisoned and every single turn she takes, she could life flip, but she doesn't. She just keeps attacking. She has a spirit, but the AI just loves 
relying on Endless Summer to barely keep her alive. And I, I'd have to do minus half a point for her. So I would say, like, yeah. Like, I'd say plus two from uh, the uh, Elmina and uh, Seiya, and then plus half for Jonah Arc and Nightmare Drain, but I'd say minus half and half because of Endless Summer and uh, Spirit Reset. So that would come out as about two, I'd, I'd rate it a two out of six for this bat. And then for D. D is, D's kind of, it's kind of an interesting one. I'd say I'd only give one full point to Mirai because again, I, I like my Crisis and I'm, I am definitely biased, but Crisis Drains, I, I think she's a really good Crisis unit because she doesn't necessarily always need to rely on Crisis because she can also still recover with Burn Drain even if she has too much spirit. And I think that's really important, or I, I think that's really useful for her. And she also has just a lot, a lot of good things going for her with her burn armor. So that'd be one point for that. And then I'd give half points to Light Ludmilla and uh, the Colin because. Again, she, I think she, she is really good for crisis teams. She can kind of work off of crisis teams still with like survival, fury, and purify heal, and uh, survival armor and all that good stuff. But I think she definitely shines the most in crisis teams because I know she really likes using Purify Heal, and that can actually uh, kind of mess up your team if you're not trying to lower your spirit. And then, um, yeah, in terms of Light Lud, again, she's still, she's still really good. She was the go-to tank, but I think that with all the other newer tanks, like, she's still relevant, but I, I definitely think that uh, all the other tanks are very I'll have a lot more ominous presence on like when you see them on the field. So she's still very good guard with holy ground and uh, auto guard. So I'd give it half a point for that. So since there's this matter, there's actually nine characters. I'd give it a 2 out of 9, just because it's, it's more so likelihood of chances of getting a character you want, is kind of how I was reading it. And for E, I think the most obvious is Dark Riz. Like, she has been a very big staple since she, she's been released. I, I don't know how much more I can uh, talk about her, like just, yeah, just poison skin, poison drain, super poison, it's, it's very, very self-explanatory. She can carry a lot of teams and guard destroyer. The other point that I'd give to would be Maisha, because Personally, I really like the stealth theory that you can hit two units. Like, I think, I personally think that's really, that's really good. That's really amazing. And being able to hit other stealth units while they are still stealth and not just miss them. I think that's, yeah, I think she deserves a point for that. And in terms of half points... I'd have to. I want. I'd, I. I kind of want to give one to uh, my my other crisis unit because, again, not 
the strongest, but with crisis armor and energy charge, like you can you can build up some really big damage and yeah, I think it's very good on a crisis team as well just being able to use up that spirit as well so i'd give i'd give him half a point because he's still kind of relevant still decent and i'd, I'd say he's still no no worthy but then uh for this banner i would actually kind of take off half a point because of this big fire dragon right here Again, because because his whole entire kit really relies and revolves around a burn team, and because it is RNG, you're not necessarily going to have a burn team to use because a burning swarm is his whole gimmick. It's more like he, he just... This character doesn't really do anything without any burn characters and it's very hard to use without any other burn units so that's why i'm gonna give it a minus half point and so yeah i'd say uh, because of that i'd give this i'd rank this a two out of eight like there like there are other good units on here but I think those are like the most noteworthy or impressionable for me. And then for F, I want to say Osia. 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 I, I'm not gonna pronounce that. Yeah, but I really like her because of her guard destroyer. Um, her whole kit, yeah, her, her whole kit's really nice. With uh, guardians and auto guards being so big, yeah, it's very, very good. Hold ground plus just adds to her longevity and just having a automatic stun. Yeah, that, that's 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 a full point for me. And then the other one. There you are. Uh, Dark Jonah Arc. Yeah. Once, if you can pull off the Unholy Revival, if you do die, and yeah, her, it really adds to the longevity and survivability. Like, if you're fighting a really high level Dark Jonah Arc, it's it's so hard to kill like with with the unholy revival and her automatic summon that and she just hits really hard and two two units with her survivor fury so that's those are two two full points for this banner and then um I would say give half a point to Water Riz because I think she she can kind of work on her own and her com her combination with Chain Sleep with and then Force Sleep is also just it kind of changes the entire way that you can play um, sleep teams. So I, I, I definitely, I definitely think she's uh, noteworthy and deserves at least half a point. And I would say Norza, he actually aged pretty well. I don't have him yet, but he can be a pain in the butt to kill with his whole uh, hold stance when he's encountered. You can't really kill him, and can be really annoying to try to face sometimes so oh man it's starting to rain I don't know if you can hear that but yeah I think he deserves half a point 
at least. So for this banner, I'd say three out of seven, since there's seven characters. And for G, G, I think G is kind of more of a support banner. So I'm actually not going to give full points to any of these. I'd give half a point for this um, auto guard. Like, yeah, auto guard, attack and counter, desperation train. I'd, I'd say it's, it's, it's worth mentioning. It's half a point. Uh, Mirai, I think she's amazing support. Like, she can help so much in just healing and generating spirit. I think it's a, it's really amazing, but again, it's for support. It's not necessarily going to be your one character carry. If if you're just thinking about like new characters or not new characters, new accounts and like um, new accounts for new people, I don't think it's going to be the carry. But for people who are looking for good supports, she's definitely a really good support. The other half point I'd give is Young Riz. Cause just because of her stun and her purifying ability. I think she she definitely has potential. And it, I think she can kind of work on more or less any team. So then with those uh, half points, that's oh, it's three half points, so I'd give it like a 1.5 out of 7. Again, this is kind of depending on your own situation and scenario of where you are in the game. And for our last one, this one actually only has 6 characters. And I would definitely recommend Anya because she's pretty much one of the best, if not the best, guardian slash barrier person in the game. And it, it just... She has a lot of utility and flexibility, and it's not always guaranteed. So it, it doesn't always work, but when it does, it works really well. Like, yeah, it doesn't always work, but when it does, it's she's really hard to kill, and she can hit really hard. Other point I'd give is to Mizuchi because of her counter skin and hold ground. She can she can last pretty long and I think she can hold her own. So I think that's that's worth a full point. So I'd give this banner a two out of six. Okay. So overall, like looking at everything, I would say for my ranking or ratings, I would have, I think, I looked at it a little bit, and I gave A a 3.5 out of 7. So that means like about a 50% chance of what I would consider a good character. And then the next highest was actually F at a 3 out of 7 which is a 42% chance. After that, I would say B with a 2.5 out of 7 with a 35% chance. After that, I would say H, a 2 out of 6 for a 33% chance. And then I actually had a tie between uh, e and between C and then both of those were 2 out of 8 or a 25% chance of like getting what I'd consider a good character also just because the minus half points of those certain characters that I don't know I think they were kind of not bad enough but kind of Characters that you don't want enough to make it worth uh, minus points. 
and then after that, I would say D with a 2 out of 9 for 22% chance. Because there's also just, there's 9 characters on this banner. And majority of them are actually kind of fairly old. And they did, not all of them actually aged well or aged the best. Like Druk, and I'm kind of sad Druk did not age very well. He was my first SSR in Evertale. Like every single fire SSR got an upgrade, except for him. I think he got gypped. Like, I'm kind of sad about that, but a lot of this banner is kind of old, except for the one. So, I'd say, yeah, that's my second to last. And my last would be uh, G at a 1.5 out of 7, which is a 21%. And again, this, is, this isn't this is saying that they're bad. This is more so looking at it as a new account, like someone who has a very brand new account who's looking more for a carry, not so much of a support. And for just completely random RNG. Because again, I'd say this banner is more for support because, yeah, some of these characters are, I'd say, the best support. Mirai, probably, probably the best support in the game for, like, everything except for Crisis, since that's a little bit contradictory. But yeah, that will be it for this video. Uh, let me know what you think where would you summon or how would you rank these banners or rate them because again this is this is totally just my personal opinion this is just just for fun since i don't have any paid soul stones and yeah just let me know what would you theorize who would you summon for what banners would you summon for do you think some characters are just that good where it's worth risking the other characters that are less des desirable uh just yeah let me know what you think in the comments below thanks for watching and i hope you all have a great one i'll see you in the next one <laughs> okay